My name is Melissa Garcia, and I'm an attorney in the transactional department of Hyman Sanchez. And today I'm going to talk about governing documents, just the basics. What are they? How can they be used? Why are they important for your community? Now, if you are on the board of directors, you really ought to know your governing documents simply because you owe a fiduciary duty to the association. And what that means is you're in a position of trust. People are trusting you to enforce the governing documents and to follow the governing documents and comply with them. So you need to know what they are. Now you may use a ton of different documents when you're governing the community, but the ones I want to talk about today are the three main ones. That's the Declaration, the Articles of Incorporation, and the Bylaws. So let's start with the Declaration. Now Declaration is sometimes called the CCNRs. It's also called the Covenants, so there's various names for this document. But what you should know is it is the most important document of the association. And why is that? It's because it establishes the rights and the obligations of the association and the owners. So for example, if you're an owner, you would see in your declaration that you have the right to swim in the common area swimming pool. You have the right to expect that your lot will be maintained or the condominium building will be maintained. You also have the obligation to pay assessments. You'll see obligations in the maintenance insurance restrictions. You'll see things like who maintains the fence, who is required to insure the second floor balcony or the carpeting in the unit. You'll see things like use restrictions. How many pets can you have in the community? What kind of vehicles can you drive? So all of these restrictions and obligations are contained in a document that is recorded with the clerk and recorder's office of the county in which the property is located. So this is really important because by virtue of recording the declaration, those restrictions bind and run with the land. And what that means is owners, regardless of whether they transfer the property, they're still bound to those restrictions that run with that land. Now this is really important for homeowners because even if you've never read your declaration, you are going to be held to have constructive notice of that declaration because it's recorded with the county. So that means read your declaration because you're going to be required to follow what's in it, even if you've never read it in the first place. Next document, Articles of Incorporation. This document, is, it simply brings the corporate entity of the association, because it is a corporation, into existence. Think of it as a birth certificate of the association. It establishes the initial board of directors, the initial incorporator who developed the community. Um, it establishes where the records are going to be kept initially, what's that principal office. And so even though it's only, it's a very simple document, maybe three or four pages, it's important because it establishes the broad purposes and rights of the association. Now, the declaration was recorded with the clerk and recorder's office. The Articles of Incorporation is filed with the Secretary of State's office. So finally, we have the bylaws. Now, the bylaws is a very important document for the Board of Directors specifically because it, it's really seen as, I like to think of it as, the operational bible of the community. And that's because so much of what's contained in the bylaws contain, it is related to the procedures, how to run that community, how to run those meetings. Things like how much notice do you have to give in order to hold a meeting and who do you give that notice to? How do you elect directors? How do you remove those directors? What are some of the officer's duties? How do you inspect records? How do homeowners request to inspect those records? So there's a lot of procedural aspects in the bylaws and it's important for the board to know this document really well because that's where I see a lot of the mistakes. There's so many technical provisions. You really ought to read the bylaws. Now, the other documents are either recorded in the clerk and recorders or filed with the Secretary of State. The bylaws don't get filed anywhere other than your own association records. So they're housed with your association records. You don't have to record them or anything. So, another thing that you should know is there, are a, there is a hierarchy amongst these governing documents. And by that I mean 
that to the extent that there's any inconsistency between and among these documents, the one that's higher in rank is going to control. So I discussed these three documents in order of that rank. So we have the Declaration, we have the Articles of Incorporation, and then the Bylaws. One other document I didn't talk about, but what's at the bottom, or the bottom rung, is the Rules and Regulations. So, as an example, if you have a set of rules and regulations that say you can have up to four pets, but you have a declaration that says you can only have two pets, the declaration is going to control because it's at the top of that hierarchy. And that's, again, really important because that's usually where I see the mistakes between the rules and regs and the declaration. Finally, if you have a set of governing documents that is maybe 10, 15 years old, there's probably a lot of provisions in there that are obsolete or worse yet contrary to Colorado law because there's been tons of changes in the law in the last 10 years. Or maybe they just don't fit with your community any, anymore. Maybe the fact that you had a one pet restriction doesn't make sense today when most people want two or three pets. In that case, you want to make sure that you consider amending those governing documents. If you don't, Remember, if it's clear and if it's in the declaration or one of your governing documents, you're required to enforce it that way. So if you don't want it in there, get rid of it. And we have another YouTube video that talks just about that, document amendments and what they are and how the process for amending and when you want to amend. So that's all for today. Thanks for joining me. Um, be sure to look at our website for more topics of discussion and for our educational series and that is located at the bottom of the screen. Thanks a lot.